Is that what it says? Share on that. Is it share? Is it no, it says share. It says right post, left post, right, right post. post. Right post. minutes and 50 seconds. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. It's PGM time, your personal growth moment with Coach White. How you guys doing? 
Uh, you might have heard us a little bit this morning doing a little bit of a sound check, checking things out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of early. Again, my wife is not really that morning person. But you know what? She's creating a new routine on Monday just for me and for you. You know, we're going to be talking today about the power of a routine. Man, the power of a routine. That's going to be some good stuff. I want to give it a little bit just time for someone else to chime in here. George, good to see you this morning. Lenny, good to see you this morning. See, these are people who are up and ready to roll and who want to get started on their week and make something significant happen. Man, I believe some people dread Mondays. I love Mondays. Because if you've been planning Sunday about your week, and I know most of us do, especially me as a teacher, man, you, you, you get off Friday, you, you relax, you hang out Saturday, kind of do some things that you haven't been able to do. From most of us who own a home, it's yard work, it's housework. And then Sunday, it's like, okay, babe, sit back. I'm just relaxing here. But then we start preparing. We may not be doing it on paper, but we're doing it in our head, though. What do I got to do? What do I got to get done? Who do I got to talk to? What time I got to be in the office? What things do I get to? All those things start rolling. And what you're doing is, for some of you, you don't even realize it, but you have a routine because that's what you do on a regular basis. And we're going to get into that today and start beginning to talk about the power of a routine. They can be good and they can be bad, man. But the bottom line is you have to have a routine if you're going to succeed in something, even if you're going to succeed in failing. <laughs> Failures have a routine. Come on now. Failure has a routine. You, got, you might want to write that down, put the post that somewhere. When you, when you get lazy, when you feel like you don't want to get something done, when you just say, eh, let it go. No, failure has a routine. Amen. Hope you got your cup of coffee. Who else is chiming in here? Lorena, good to see you this morning. Man, I'm telling you what, I love this thing. You got to execute a plan. That's right. Mondays are for executing plans. Good job, George. You're, George, you may need to start your own stuff. I like, I like George because George is focused a lot of times. He knows how to play, but he knows how to be focused. And when you got to lead a lot of people, you have to be focused. Amen. I'm going to get a sip of this coffee here. Uh, you see, even my voice is a little bit different on Monday morning. Let me give it one more sip. Uh, yeah. I know. I'm ready this morning. Hey, honey, are you ready there on the other side of the camera there? She's giving me the thumbs up. She's ready to, if anything goes wrong, she's there. Oh, she's right on it right away. I love that woman there. Yes, it's. I, I, she's been blessed since she married me. Believe me, she has been blessed since she's married me. <laughs> uh, the power of a routine. You see, I, I've had the, the, the opportunity to work in ministry, work in college basketball, work in education, work in companies. Uh, not real big companies, smaller companies, but they all had one thing in common is that they had a system of operation. They had systems and structures that were in place that created routines for us as employees in order to achieve the success that they were after. But it was also to help us achieve the success that we were after. See, even churches, churches have to have systems and they have to have structures if they're going to succeed. Every business has to have some type of routine that keeps people moving in a succinct order in order to achieve a certain outcome. Amen. You like that word succinct? That, that just came to me right there. You know, my wife and my father-in-law, we sit at the table sometimes and they go, why did you have to use a big word? Why did you have to use a big word? I didn't try to use a big word. It just came to my head. What happened? <laughs> my wife's looking at me. Oh, she gives you that oh, look in her head right there. Oh, man. Yeah. I, uh, hey, Jim. Yeah. When you work 24 hour shifts every day, <laughs> third day is Monday. <laughs> I agree. Oh, some alert came home and went across the phone. Okay, so you can have the best intentions, but if you don't have a system or routine to get things done, you're more likely going to fail than you are succeed. See, a lot of us, we wake up with intentions or we have an intention to do something, but if we're not having, if we don't have a system or a structure in place to do it, we're not going to get it done. See, routines are something that we do every day, like brushing our teeth, washing our face. I hope you wash your face and brush your teeth. 
Those are things we do every day when we wake up. Today I had the alarm set. I woke up, took off the alarm. First thing I do, I have routine. I sit at the edge of the bed and I kind of collect my thoughts, kind of collect myself before I get up. Because so many times you get up too soon, the lights aren't on, you stub your toe, come on now, or you bump into something, or you just, or sometimes you stand up too fast and you get dizzy. So I try to avoid those things by doing that. See, every routine that we have is supposed to cause us to perform something that moves us in the direction of we want to achieve, what do we become, or we want to possess. Every routine should move us in that direction. You know, there's some times where I take a certain direction to go somewhere all the time, and my wife says, why are you taking that? See, you're stuck in a rut. That's the same routine. You keep going that same way. You keep going that same way. Well, that same way gets me there at the time I want to get there. It may not be the way that she wants to go, because sometimes she wants to stay on, in Chicago when you travel. She wants to stay on, on the, some of the main streets all the time. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm the kind of guy that, you know, some of you are like this. I'm taking the shortcuts. I'm taking this street, this side street, this side street. And she says, well, it's too narrow for the truck because we, we have an SUV. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to take my side streets. I'm going to take this. And I know the side streets when I get to certain intersections that are that are too busy, take too long, have construction. I know I have a routine for those types of things. And so you may have those type of routines too. When you get stuck, when you get confronted, when things are slowing down, you automatically shift into something to drive a certain way, go in another direction, make a specific decision. That's a routine. And those are positive routines because they get you where you want to go when you want to get there. Come on, man. Amen. And I say amen because I do preaching too a lot of times. You know, one of the routines I created this summer that started in May was when the COVID hit, I was doing my teaching online. But I said, since I'm at home now, I want to create a routine of reading more. So I would get up like about 6 a.m. By 6.30, I had me and the dog outside, and I was reading my Bible every day, reading six chapters out there, three in the old, three in the new, because I want to get it all done before January 1 shows up. So that was a new routine, but it was a productive routine because I wanted to read more scripture. But after that, I wanted to read more books. I wasn't reading enough because I was spending my time teaching, coaching. I wasn't incorporating reading. Uh, what's, there's a phrase that my mom always says that readers, readers are achievers, readers are achievers. So I've been able to read five books and I've got two new books now that I'm reading that I'm trying to cram in now to get done this month. I really got to spend some time at it. Um, so I want to create more in my life. So I have to create a new routine or I have to create more routines in my life to be able to succeed at the new things that I want to accomplish. See, new goals require new routines. New routines create new habits and habits create new outcomes. I'm going to say that again for you. You may want to write that down. To teach new goals, you have to create new routines. To reach new goals, you have to create new routines. New routines create new habits, and new habits create new outcomes. You want new outcomes? Get some new habits. See, to be more effective in your routines, they must be automatic. Think about that, automatic. Sometimes when you go to, uh, George, I know George works out. Lenny, you probably used to work out. <laughs> and uh, so when George goes, works out, George tells me, he goes, I'm going to shred this day. I'm going to mass this day. See, he's got routines for those things. And those routines give him the results that he wants in the weight room. And so George, one time, I remember George one time was a certain weight and he said, yeah, I'm, this month I'm shredding. So he would cut down his eating and then he would do something in the weight room to cause that. And next thing you know, he was shredding down to the size that he wanted. Why? He changed his routine. He created a system and a structure, put it in operation and was achieving his goals. I remember that uh, when I had torn my knee. In, in college, I had torn ligaments. I tore the knee and it, it was messed up. The doctor said these, this kind of injury is something that maybe hockey players get when they get cut out or somebody slides into them and just takes out their knee. It was a torn ligament. And I said, oh my gosh. And he said, we're going to have to give you, put you in rehabilitation after this. Well, I learned there that the greater the challenge, the greater the routine. The greater the challenge, the greater the routine. See, I had to have a routine in rehabilitation that was going to match the level of the knee injury that I had. See, there's no sense in having a routine that's not matching the challenge. If you want something over here, then you better have a routine up here. If you have a routine up here, but you, I mean, a challenge up here, but a routine down here, you're not going to achieve it. You have to match, come on now, the challenge with the routine or the routine to the challenge. 
I had a create the doctor had an outline rehabilitation that worked that knee to get me back to the level of performance that I needed to compete in college again on scholarship. Because if it didn't, then I wasn't going to be able to come back and be successful. Well, between that doctor and a doctor I had back home in Chicago, I mean, a, a coach I had back in Chicago who was a weight trainer, we developed a plan in order to get my knee back to the level that it, that it was so that I could be successful again in, in playing baseball in college. And so I ask you today, what challenges are you going through right now? Is the routine that you have meeting the level of that challenge? It, it may be in your marriage, it may be in your job, it may be with your kids, it may be just you personally trying to get rid of some habits. Maybe there's some vices that you're dealing with, you know, that you have to get rid of. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying, yeah, you know, I, I had to take some ibuprofen and I had to take just a sip of coffee because my head was pounding, but they were trying to break drinking coffee every single morning because when they went out, their head started hurting. So what? He's got to create a new routine. What's the challenge? The headaches from getting, from getting rid of coffee. See, I, I don't get headaches, so I don't worry about that. So he had to create a routine now. So his routine, just a sip of coffee, just to give him a touch of caffeine, but the ibuprofen to take away the pain. Now, I would imagine we all know that that caffeine addiction can be broken. So that'll be in time, be done in time. But it's the routine that they had to create again. See, where am I at here now? So you cannot have a system of operation that is below the level of what you desire to achieve. What systems have you put in place? Are those systems meeting your needs? Are those systems meeting the level of achievement that you want to succeed in? Man, I mean, I'm, I've been learning some things about this as well, too. But when I wanted to change the level of my marriage, I had to create new routines. Let me give you an example. Um, I have not always been one of those guys who's real affectionate uh, around the house or just always wanting to hug or, or bump and you know, walk up to my wife and just kiss her and say, good morning, babe. I love you, whatever the case may be. But my wife was like that. So I would walk by her and she would hold out her arms like this. And I would if I ignored her, I was in major trouble. I was in major trouble. But I would go hug her. And then I would tap her on the back and, and telling her, I'm done here. I'm done. Here. I'm done here. But she would hold on to me. And she would not let me go. She kept holding me and holding me. And I was getting upset because this is not me. I don't do this. Or walk by. Sometimes she goes, you didn't kiss me when you walked by me. Or, or, she, or she'd walk by and she goes, you didn't tap me. You didn't touch me. I'm going, oh, my gosh, this woman here. See, but I was I had to learn if I want my marriage together to get better, I had to create the level of routine that would allow my marriage to get better. So now I do walk by and hug her. I do try to tell her I love her every day. If she does walk by, I do try to touch her or smack her. Come on now. Come on, guys. Women want affection. They, they're, they're like, uh, I almost said they're like dogs. They always want to have attention. <laughs> Man, don't say that to your wife. <laughs> oh, but they want constant attention, and that's fine. And so my marriage has got better because why? I created a new routine in our relationship. It's a structure that was a system of structure that went here that resulted out here that got me a better marriage. Now, is it where I want it, where it needs to be? No, not yet, because I still need to continue to change to be better. I still need to learn to be more affectionate. I still need to be learn to be more just uh, loving to her on a regular basis. I didn't really grow up in that mold. My dad didn't do I didn't see my dad do that a lot. And so behavior, a lot of behavior is learned. Some is instinctive, but a lot of it's learned. And so I had to learn to behave that way so that I automatically, see routine is something we do automatically. So I had to learn to do that automatically so that when something did happen, I instinctively responded that way. So what do I classify that as? What's called regulating your behavior. All right, you got, I'm gonna finish right here. You gotta regulate your behavior, okay? You have to decide what behaviors and habits you need to implement to get you where you want to get to. All right. Regulating behavior. All right. You have to wake up, maybe wake up earlier, go to bed earlier. Okay. Or do more work in the evening and less work in the morning. What, what's, what's it going to be? It's got to be, you got to regulate that behavior. When I took a new job teaching at another school, I had to teach at two schools now. 
they, they shared me I was shared teaching I had to wake up earlier eat breakfast earlier uh, get through stuff readings in the morning earlier and then go to work a different direction I had to create a new new way to get to work a new routine one I would just go straight up a street this time I had to get on the expressway and when you get on the expressway in Chicago at 6 30 in the morning it is bumper to bumper already but that's the time I had to get on there to get to where I had to be. So I had to create a new routine. I had to regulate behavior. All right. See, the new routines are built around new disciplines and new behaviors, which provided me with new outcomes. That's, that's just so necessary. I'm going to read that again. Your new routine has got to be built around new disciplines. Yes, it will require discipline and new behaviors, which will provide you with new outcomes. I'm going to leave you with this quote by Sammy, author Sam Chan. I love this guy. Um, I'm reading his book now, Bigger, Faster Leadership, and it's really good. And he said, I'm going to read it here. I realize more passion and bigger dreams are not the answer. Wow. I, I was like, holy mackerel. I realize that more passion and bigger dreams are not the answer. The way to grow faster is through better systems and better structures. What's he saying? You got to have routines. Routines are one of the ways that will accelerate your level of excellence. Man, I hope that helps you this morning. Um, like I said, this is a new routine for me and my wife. Getting up early, making sure that we're ready for you every single Monday morning for your personal growth moment. Man, let me just take a look at this here. I just want to say Jim Pack, man, thank you. Brad Bender, thank you. Kenny, KP. Man, I thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate you. We've had some discussions going on where I know I'm growing from those things, learning some things. I'm hoping I'm helping you grow in some areas too because we all need change. Things don't change unless people change. Amen. Ah, there's my mother-in-law. Ma, Sandy, way to tune in this morning. Hey, start this week. Look at what you want to achieve this week and decide what routines you need to change to achieve the things that you want to achieve this week. Man, I'll tell you, it could be small, it could be big, but anything you change will create a new outcome in your life. Hey, this is Coach White. I'll be back Wednesday night with our Word Wednesday at 6 p.m. where me and my wife come on and we share a word, the Word of God with you on the evening time. This is your personal growth moment. Have a great week. I'm looking forward to have a great day. In fact, when I get done here, I'm going to finish my coffee and probably head, head over to where I got to go work out so I can get some weightlifting in and drop some of these pounds that I put on during COVID. That was a routine that I messed up on right there. I didn't stay with my routine and staying on my, on my diet. All right. Have a great week. Love you guys. Thank you.